Greetings, and I do apologize for my rather longish absence, but my fiancé has been terribly oppressive with regards to the planning of our wedding, and uh, I simply haven't had the time to do anything. It's all about the wedding dress and the gown and what have you. Just kidding. None of that's true, as you likely could suspect. Uh, however, uh, let's get to business. Today, 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 I would like to talk about um, synthetic testosterone in the context of male contraception. Now, I've been meaning to do this for quite some time, but I actually have not had, I've had scant time to do very much of anything on this channel, um, in part because of lack of inspiration, but also because uh, I've been sort of rethinking my life in general. Certainly not my bachelorhood, but uh, career-wise, and uh, it's neither here nor there. Synthetic testosterone. Yes, synthetic testosterone is what uh, is called in common parlance a steroid. It is, um, in, in terms of its molecular stru structure, identical to uh, natural testosterone, that is testosterone produced in the body. Um, there are different forms of synthetic testosterone. Uh, there are what we would call uh, oral testosterone uh, pills, basically that need to uh, undergo a bypass effect in the liver. There are patches, more, most common, or I would say not most common, but those who mo most readily associate synthetic testosterone with, ste with the concept of steroids, um, in injectable uh, uh, steroids in the form of an uh, oil-based su substance, not always oil-based. There are um, short-duration esters, long-duration esters. Uh, for example, uh, the compound testos testosterone propionate I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right in English. Most of my knowledge uh, has always has been acquired in German, so I apologize. Um, is a uh, what do you call a short duration ester that doesn't last much more than uh, two days, and then you have much longer compounds that last up to up to three weeks or even a month, um, with things in between, such as Scipionate or uh, et enantate being about two weeks uh, more or less. Um, and I apologize if this sounds rather um, jargonish, uh, but uh, I'll explain all of that in due time. I'm actually not scripting this. I wanted to do that, but uh, I just thought I'd just do it off the cuff, as is uh, sometimes customary with me. But you might be asking yourself, uh, why is he talking about synthetic testosterone as a contraceptive? After all, we all know that steroids are evil and bad, and they're basically drugs, and only bad people use them. Well, let's get into the details. Let's first talk about steroids in general. Uh, the vast majority of steroids, and I, I have quite a bit of knowledge about this subject, although I'm not, I wouldn't call myself an expert. I'm certainly, and I'm a, and in my expertise is, is amateurish, if, if, if you will. Uh, but they're all essentially derivatives of, uh, on a molecular level, from, of the, um, the male hormo hormone testosterone. So there are other steroid compounds, such as nandrolon, um, drosolone, and so on and so forth, I won't get into those, it's probably pretty boring for most people, that um, have slight differences in their molecular structure that produce, of course, correspondingly different effects, um, but they are also derivatives of testosterone. Synthetic testosterone is, uh, to a T, identical to the naturally produced substance hormone um, produced both in males and females, although in, in certainly in much greater concentrations in males than females. And uh, it is uh, something that has been around, well, for many, many decades at the very least. Um, it was first isolated on a molecular level sometime in the late 30s. I'll hopefully I can post links to all of this. And uh, it's, been, it's been purported, at least, that uh, not the Nazis had used it to sort of boost, uh, that it was even available back then to boost uh, their uh, soldiers' performance on the battlefield, and so on and so forth. So it's been around for quite some time. Now what I don't want to do in this video is talk about the strength enhancing or athletic enhancing uh, aspects of synthetic testosterone. Um, they are uh, not really relevant, at least tangentially only relevant to what I want to discuss here. What I in fact want to discuss is test synthetic testosterone as a contraceptive. Once again, what is he talking about? Well, uh, people often talk about the, the male pill and uh, as it were, there's been a male pill for at least four or five decades. 
Um, it's something that's well known, for example, in so-called bodybuilding circles, if you will, use that term. Um, something that's been quite known for quite some time. You see, we've had a male pill for uh, a fair bit of time, but uh, people haven't talked about it. Part of the reason, of course, is because of its uh, sort of demonic association with, uh, with the drugdom or uh, <laughs> well, basically sports enhancing or performance enhancing effects. Um, it is classified essentially as an illegal substance in most countries in the West. Uh, synthetic testosterone can be only uh, can only uh, be had and uh, made available via prescription. Um, there, of course, is a thriving black market for synthetic tes testosterone, as is there uh, for many other um, compounds, including uh, non-steroid compounds such as uh, somatotropin, human growth hormone, and what have you. But um, it is essentially a demonized substance by dint of its association with, uh, well, it is a steroid, it's a steroid compound. And yes, testosterone, synthetic testosterone, uh, even in the most uh, minimally administered quantities, uh, is, will produce some sort of uh, beneficial effect in terms of strength, endurance, uh, what have you, usually. It really depends on your genetic makeup in that case. Um, but that's not what's, in, what in, what's interesting to us. What's interesting to us is, um, and I'll post uh, several links to several studies, the thing that's been known for quite some time, even before it was actually studied in medical circles. It was known, as I said, in, in bodybuilding circles, because bodybuilding essentially has always been, at least for the last five decades, about uh, using various quantities of steroids. It's been quite known. And what has been known? What has been known is that um, sufficient uh, doses of testosterone, synthetic testosterone, over a prolonged period of time will uh, bring about a temporary state of infertility in men. This is easily explained. I'll expl I will, without getting too technical about it, I'll explain what happens. Um, imagine, if you will, that the body is producing a certain uh, amount of testosterone per, per day. Uh, that uh, is then, uh, that body then receives a, a something like a hundredfold of what it normally would produce. Um, now initially, nothing happens, but over a prolonged period of time, say two weeks, a month, uh, even better, the body will react to that. What happens then? The majority of testosterone, I in a male at least, is produced in the so-called testes, the t uh, testicles. The, the male body at least, uh, I won't talk about females and steroids, it's another topic for another day, um, reacts to the administration of synthetic testosterone for a long period of time by downregulating its own production. So essentially the body, uh, the male body, uh, notes, hmm, we have an overabundance of uh, testosterone here, far more than we can produce on our own. We don't need to do it anymore, we as in you know, our bodies. Um, and so it sends a signal uh, to simplify it down to the testicles and um, and basically you start stop producing, at least temporarily. It really depends on how much. Um, but in most cases, after a prolonged period of time, you will be, I say, temporarily infertile. Just as a woman, in theory, is temporarily infertile when she's on the so-called pill. This effect has been well known uh, in non-scientific, non non-medical circles for, as I said, many decades. But uh, not well known um, to the public in general. And uh, at the very least not talked about uh, very much in scientific and medical circles, no doubt, as I said, because of the uh, demonic association of synthetic testosterone with uh, all things evil. Um, now, for the record, let me say I'm neither endorsing nor, uh, nor dis discouraging uh, individual men from uh, making use of synthetic testosterone. It's your body. You do what you want with it. Um, I'm just explaining what happens and explaining something that should be known to more men and should be known to the general public. Uh, synthetic testosterone is, uh, if properly administered and not in, in totally excessive doses, uh, at least, if not more safe, or safer rather, than um, the so-called female birth control pill. Uh, for many decades, uh, it was theorized that um, synthetic testosterone w contributed to prostate cancer. There have been recent studies which have actually refuted this. Um, uh, you, 
the side effects depend really ultimately depend on your own personal genetic makeup. So uh, some people will have all sorts of side effects from even a low dose, and some people will have uh, no side effects from a high dose, and some people have something in between. So let's just go through some of the potential side effects. Um, some of the secondary side effects, of course, are you know, bad skin, acne, oi uh, particularly oily skin, um, excessive hair growth, more than you're accustomed to at least, um, uh, elevated uh, values uh, in the liver, potentially uh, elevated levels of, of LDL, uh, cholesterol versus uh, HDL, an imbalance, that is to say, uh, low, den l low density um, lipids versus uh, high density. Um, and these are, these are, of course, uh, all potentially there. Um, we all know that the female birth control isn't the safest and most healthy product out in the market either. As I said, it's less safe than synthetic testosterone is. After all, it is simply a concoction, much more a concoction than synthet synthetic testosterone is because synthetic testosterone is simply a scientific replication of what the body already produces. Um, we could talk about the chemistry of uh, the male female birth control pill, and I, I might do this in a separate video and just say compared to testosterone, but I don't want to take too much time. So, yes, there are some potential side effects, but they're really quite minimal. Many studies have shown this. And uh, I'll just read off one of the studies. Uh, this is from 2009. If you Google this, you'll find n a great deal of evidence to support my claims and to support what I'm saying here. So this article, I'll post a link, uh, May 6, 2009. Uh, I like the, the, this is how it starts. After decades of delay, hormonal birth control men may be a step closer to reality. This is 2009. Mind you, this has been known for decades. Let's continue. Monthly injections of a testosterone-based contra contraceptive were 99% effective in preventing, 99% perfective, I stress that, for preventing partner pregnancy in what researchers say is the largest trial ever of a hormone-based male, uh, male birth control approach. A testosterone therapy is usually given to men to treat a condition resulting from a lack of testosterone. In men, testosterone controls sperm production, erections, and sex drive, and so on and so forth. You can read the rest for yourself. But uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the thing that's been in front of our noses the whole time. We all knew it, or some of us knew it, and yet no one talked about it. Uh, I think there are two elements in play. Like I said, let's let's once again go over what it does. So synthetic testosterone administered administer to the body over a prolonged period of time creates a, a down regulation effect in the body. The body reacts in a natural way, uh, noting the exogenically administered uh, testosterone in excess, far in excess to what the body could produce, um, thus giving uh, no longer producing itself. There's no need. Um, it also the, the sperm production. That's the key element here, is drastically reduced to the point of temporary infertility. I stress temporary because the once you get off of it, depending on what compounds you might use to you know, boost your natural levels again, um, you will eventually become fertile. Um, there are no, um, it's high, uh, certainly with regards to fertility, the, it's, it's a total myth if people are claiming this, that synthetic testosterone causes um, permanent side effects. It's a little bit malarkey, quite frankly. And yet we have, we've had the, uh, the female birth control pill for at least four decades. Everyone knows about it. It's uh, considered, well, you do need a prescription, but it's certainly not demonized. Women use it all the time, allegedly. <laughs> um, but uh, the same can't be said for synthetic testosterone. And before we get to the point, uh, as Barbara has talked about, of some of these al other alternatives, I think it's time we actually look at things that, uh, well, are already there and have been for quite some time. After all, um, if if we have something that's pretty cheap, uh, it's it's depending on on how you go about it. Synthetic testosterone is cheaper. Well. If, if legally, who knows? Um, but I anyway, it's it's fairly accessible. Um, and like I said, I'm not endorsing anything here. Um, but the point is that the, the, the you get it for a comparable price, even if even if you go into the doctor and get a prescription, then then you could um, say the pill if you were a female. And uh, it just sort of boggles the mind, at least initially, why why men don't have access to it. There are a couple of things, reasons for this. One reason, of course, is classic uh, misandry. I mean, uh, 
you don't want to give men control of their own fertility. You know, the gods forbid. If that happens, they uh, they might stop impregnating women when women want to get pregnant, pregnant, uh, pregnant and entrap them. And we certainly don't want that. No, no, no. We need to keep the men on a leash. We need to have the females in control of that. So, of course, that's that's an element. I, I, I'm firmly convinced of that. Uh, another uh, element is, of course, the pharmaceutical industry in conjunction with various Western governments um, making an essentially controlled substance. Um, of course, this, this has done nothing, as in the case with all drugs. And let's talk about drugs very briefly. I mean, we have this sort of uh, overarching term, drug, and yet uh, drug can be mean all sorts of things. You have good drugs and bad drugs, and aspirin's a drug too. People don't really usually refer to it as a drug. So, you know, but let's talk about the government. The government, in say, in the United States or in other countries, issues certain cer issues uh, certain mandates with regards to what drug is permissible and what and what drug is not. What you can get over the counter and what you can't. What has to be prescribed and what can't be prescribed at all. Um, this is, uh, of course, has, has a large impact on what um, what the public will think about things. Because depending on what the government, in conjunction with the pharmaceutical industry, which is usually in bed with the government, uh, says a, dru a quote-unquote drug can be a good or a bad thing. You know, uh, synthetic testosterone, along with other steroid compounds, is always associated with bad things, bodybuilding. And for those, uh, you know, I, I hesitate to disappoint you, but... Uh, virtually all top athletes, at least in the United States, uh, be it in basketball, uh, American football, baseball, they're all u making copious use of various steroid compounds, most likely growth hormone, human growth hormone as well. Um, you know, for those you can remember, remember when Jose Canseco um, of the, uh, God, I'm not a baseball fan, of the Oakland, hmm, I forgot the name of the baseball team, how embarrassing, but when he published his uh, so-called autobiography, when he revealed how much of how much juice he was on, to use the uh, the common parlance term, juice for steroids. Everyone was shocked, but uh, that's, the, that's the way it's been going on for decades. I mean, top professional top athletes, all these guys are all on massive, massive doses of various steroid compounds, uh, even though that's not talked about either. Why is it not talked about? Once again, it's demonized and evil. And because it's demonized and evil, and because the government has a strong uh, a stranglehold on it, a lot in conjunction with pharmaceutical industries, um, the knowledge, the common knowledge uh, that many people have that uh, it is a efficient and, and reasonably safe a means of male birth control, it's simply not out there. People don't know it. So what can be done about this? Well, you can make videos like the video I'm making now. Uh, that can help. Uh, I'm trying to spread some knowledge here and let people know. And of course, there are clinical, me there are medical studies, clinical studies, which indicate this. Um, you know, but of course, it's unlikely that this will become uh, a common means of male birth control uh, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, like I said, females, the, the domain of birth control is, or the province of birth control is a female one. It's not going to change anytime soon. And I apologize for my pessimism, but that's simply the case. Um, like I said, our, our synthetic testosterone is most readily associated with you know, men in andropause or men with insufficient natural levels of testosterone. It's, it's really associated with a means of birth control for men. So uh, there, the only thing we can do is to try to spread this knowledge, make people aware of these things, particularly men aware of these things. Um, the day is not going to likely come, at least in, say, in the United States, where the, the government says, well, you know what, we've been making a mistake the whole time, and you know, these pharmaceutical guys, they're all wrong. We need to let men have access to synthetic testosterone um, so they can you know, take care of their own uh, birth control and not just leave it in the hands of women. Can you imagine how abs how absurdly cool that would be on the one hand, but also how absurdly unrealistic that would be? It simply would not happen. Uh, I certainly doubt it would happen. Um, so what we can do, uh, we can just uh, spread the knowledge, uh, which is uh, it's fairly well known. Uh, like I said, I'll post a bunch of links. You can uh, you can have a look uh, at them, and uh, you know. It's it's all there. It's it's an effective means of male. It's an effective male contraceptive. It's been known for decades. Nobody talks about it. 
And uh, the reasons why? Well, uh, I already have I've cited numerous reasons. Um, so that's up for, to you to decide uh, whether or not you want to make use of this or not. I'm not going to endorse it. I'm not going to discourage it. But um, you know, I think when when something by the especially from by the government is demonized and level is it always bears further uh, is worthy of further scrutiny in my opinion. So if you know steroids are evil, um, you should ask yourself why they're evil or why is synthetic testosterone evil? After all, it is just a, a synthetic version of what's already produced in the body. So how can that be evil by definition? Um, yes, it can enhance your strength and your speed and what have you and do other things uh, but uh, so what I mean if ever there were a hormonal cocktail out there uh, it's uh, the female birth control pill like I said I might actually talk about that on a separate occasion anyway uh, need to get back to planning the uh, the wedding which I'm so ecstatic about my fiance is just driving me uh, crazy in planning it I've already uh, borrowed uh, $40,000 and I've gone into even more debt, various loan sharks in an effort to make a beautiful wedding for her. So anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about that for now. Perhaps we will see each other at a later date. Like I said, there's much going on, at the very least in my mind at this current moment in time. So I don't know how off videos, uh, how often, or oft for that matter, it's a bit archaic, videos will be forthcoming, but uh, we shall see, we shall see. Thanks for watching, and uh, take care, everyone.